Hello, hello, I'm Katz, and welcome back to the Free to Play Review. So today's topic is going to be the Hero's Path featuring Fragments 4 and the Soul for the recent fusion Fragment Summon Champion, Brugard Jerobum. As we predicted in my Fusion Plan video, this particular iteration of the Hero's Path is a combination of Dungeon Divers as well as the effective Summon Rush for the fusion. So players going for the Fragment Summon, which admittedly is a very small portion of the entire player base, will have to in some part complete part of the Hero's Path. I guess right off the bat, the good thing to establish is that these amount of points are the same as we'd normally expect and see in a hero's path including one for dungeon divers and for a summon rush so nothing has been nerfed in this case unlike the deck of fate so it's pretty standard values and we we'll go over the best things to do it is a very odd path i must admit there's a uh, seven keys in total you don't start off with one and all of the fragments are in one single line but each of them is locked behind one key so we'll talk about how far you might want to go if you're thinking about it and uh, how the best way is to do that and then there's an adjacent column that also has all of these souls. Now, I don't really see any reason that anyone would go for these souls. One, he's not that good of a champion, but also if you don't have him, you have no reason to go for the soul. So I feel like most people would be going for the fragments before they would be going for the soul. Now, before we get to the exact path, I just want to point out exactly where all the keys are. So they're kind of organized once again into columns. Everything's in columns here. But we have one key here, one here, one here, and those are individual uh, columns that you can pursue. And then here near the bottom, the furthest most left column also has two extra keys. And then the furthest most right columns remerge down here to also give you more two, uh, two more keys. So two, two, and 111 gives you a grand total of seven. So the way I decided to break down this path is starting with the fragments and then working our way through the souls. And if you were getting the minimum amount of fragments required from this hero's path, you would need to get 10. Assuming you did everything else, you maxed out every other event or tournament in the game. However, if you were skipping some of the earlier events, then you'd have to go a little bit further and further towards the 20 uh, fragments that's up for grabs. But again, we're starting off with the 10 fragments. So starting things off, you can basically pick your poison, come down the left hand or the right hand sign, but you will need two keys in order to get the first 10 fragments and that will cost you a grand total of 28,500 points again that is coming down either the left hand side or one of the right hand sides picking up two of the keys and then also coming down here opening these with 3,000 each and that will give you the grand total we specified if you wanted to go a bit further to the 15 fragments or if you needed to go a bit further to the 15 fragments basically you just pick whichever column you didn't do and get the third key from that that would be the cheapest way come down here where you already have been to get the 10 fragments pick up the extra five for an extra 3,000, and that would be 40,000 points. And then if you needed to go all the way down to the 20 fragments, you'd have to make a decision, either the left-hand side or the right-hand side. Again, the cost is identical. An extra 19,000 points, go through one of the legendary tomes, get the two, uh, two key node, and that would cost you 61,000 points. Now, at this point, I decided to just kind of keep going from there and just say, assume you were going for all 20 fragments and then going for the souls. But it, obviously, it would be cheaper if you, for some reason, wanted to get the souls, but you only needed to get 10 of the fragments for example. But continuing on from there, at that point, you'd have one extra key. So you could freely just come down here, the, the other column and get the soul, plug in the 5,000 and you'd be at 70,500. If you wanted to go a bit further and get the four star or the five star soul, regardless, you would have to get all of the keys. And so you'd have to come down whichever side you didn't come down, get the, you know, the 9,000 and the 10,000 for the second legendary tome, and then pick up the second set of double keys. And then just getting the four star soul would be 99,000 points. And then coming down for the five star soul would be 134,000 points. Now, obviously that is a whole lot of numbers I just threw out at you and that is definitely a very complicated way to look at it, but we do also have those values transcribed in the spreadsheet which we linked in the description box down below. Note that there are multiple tabs. I think it defaults to the fusion plan spreadsheet, but you can come all the way over to the Heroes Path calculator to see this uh, specific tab. So we do have the dungeon diver section which is relevant in this case. You can get a good chunk of dungeon divers points just by doing what you're already doing. If you are pursuing the fusion, there is a champion training uh, event going on right now as well as an ice golem tournament and so you're going to get credit for running those either of those or both of those in terms of uh, coins for the event but of course the main source of points is going to be from the uh, summon rush aspect so the main thing i want to point out here is that the minimum you would need to actually complete the fusion assuming you did every other event which is what i did in my case you would only need about seven sacreds which is not far from what you'd normally have to do to get you know that minimum threshold from a normal fusion summon 
Summon Rush. So 7 Sacred is 3,500 points if you want to think of the functional equivalent in a Fusion Summon Rush. So it's not far off from the norm. It is pretty typical. But granted, this is normally the upper threshold for getting points in the Summon Rush, and the lower threshold is somewhere around 2,000 or 2,100, uh, 2,150, 2,250, somewhere around 4 Sacreds and some Chains. So technically speaking, it is more expensive, but also typically in a normal Summon Rush, you're only getting, you only need to get 5 Fragments. In this case, you have to get 10. So it's a little bit different, but it's a little bit more expensive than your average Fusion, in fairness, if you're kind of min-maxing the Summon Rush while maximizing the Champion Chase. But nonetheless, it's not out of the realm of possibilities for, for what you would normally have to invest in to complete any uh, uh, run-of-the-mill Fusion. If you wanted to go beyond that, you can see for yourself all the values here. It gets worse and worse and worse, obviously, as you try to get more and more points. But I honestly don't think that anyone's really going to be in that realm. Again, 80% of the player base, at least from polls that I've seen, aren't even doing the Fusion because he's just not that great of a champion, and I agree with that. I happen to be doing the Fusion because I do every Fusion, and all I need to do is get the minimum amount of points. That's just how I set up my uh, progress for the uh, for the Fusion, and so I'm not really worrying about these upper values either. It's not really that good of a value unless you really just feel like pulling for the sake of pulling because of the progressive chance going on right now as well. So my plan is essentially just to do exactly what I already said, which is focus on champion training and Ice Golem and do as much of that as possible before Sunday, just the last day, just to maximize the amount of points I can get from both from the Dungeon Diver aspect, and then I'll switch over to pulling shards. As it stands right now, you can see that I have 4,400 points and a Sacred is worth 4,500. So effectively, I will have one less Sacred to pull. So for me, it's going to be six Sacreds maximum that I'd have to pull to get this completed. I highly doubt I'm going to work my way through Divers all the way up to 9,000 points, but that would be stellar because then I would also be able to, or I'd be able to save an extra Sacred, but I'm not banking on that. We'll have to see when Sunday comes around, but definitely I'm able to save at least one Sacred. So it's only going to cost me six Sacreds. And then just for context here, Champion Training event going on for two days. I had a massive stockpile of energy waiting to go, as well as the energy in the, uh, the clan shop and you can see day one i've already done eight thousand points which is pretty stellar so only a little bit to go three thousand on that one and then for ice golem the tournament i believe i'm at like a thousand and some change so i'm going to be focusing on that a little bit more so today or tonight after reset but uh, the point being that there's still a decent amount but not a ton of champion training and ice golem to do and so I, again i don't anticipate i can get all the way out to nine thousand so most likely my plan is just going to be to do what i can with these two tournaments and tournaments and event and then just pull six sacreds and call it a day. In terms of my formal recommendation for you guys, if you are doing the fusion, then I recommend doing something similar. Focus on champion training and ice golem to get as many divers points as you can, and then fill as much as you need with sacred shards if you want to pull that. You could also pull primals, you could pull voids. There are a decent amount of points. Um, you can check out how much that would be in the spreadsheet, of course. But I think everyone's default typically is going to be sacred shards. However, for the majority of the player base that's skipping the fusion, then this event is completely irrelevant. It's just like any other summon rush that you would just not participate in. So you can just skip it and who cares what the milestones are it doesn't really matter you don't have to do anything and obviously a lot of people were you know were saving their shards for freya and whatnot and obviously that would turn out to be soul stones instead so this is certainly not the event that you want to spend your shards on just because it's in pursuit of the fusion that you're probably skipping and so you can just skip it and keep saving for something better in the future i don't know i feel kind of feel like it's a win-win overall but those are just my thoughts let me know in the comment section down below what your plan is for this particular iteration of the hero's path again i anticipate that most people are just going to be skipping it because there's no reason to do anything but maybe some people are just looking at the progressive chance champions and saying hey maybe i'm close to mercy might be worth the risk or i want to get closer to mercy because there might be a pogo event there happened to be a random uh, ancient pogo the other day just for one day only so maybe there's a sacred one coming up who knows that's going to do it for the free to play review of jerobum's hero's path and as always if you found this video helpful then be sure to hit that like button down below it really does help out the channel and feel free to subscribe to the channel if you are enjoying the content for more content just like this one in the future thanks for watching and have a good one.